I wanted to stretch my sort of coming up with crazy ideas muscles. The, the beekeeper game here was sort of, it was, I was watching Star Trek in a movie and it was very 3D, some of the fight scenes. And I liked the idea of having a whole world that you can sort of click and drag like a spore world. And this is built as an interactive collage, which is you know, just freaking weird. And um, this game is like no other RTS I've played because of the restrictions. And the thing is, that's what I wanted to build up. I wanted to build up style. I wanted to build up being able to do crazy stuff. Platformers, it's a, it's a iterative versus innovative thing. If I come up with an idea in a platformer, I'm going to be like, all right, I'm jumping. I want something to kill me. Well, I'll make spikes. That's sort of one step. And then you've got the innovative stuff where you're completely in this really crazy world. And you're like, I know what I'll do. I'll have hell crows attack from the side. Like, you know, just random. And it really sparks the, the neurons. So, so you would argue for you know, a variety of... I would argue that you do what you want to do and have fun, because generally that's doing crazy stuff. Um, most of the people in this room are not boring people. We're at PAX, right? Thanks. <laughs> yeah, uh, my question is, uh, for the $5,000 you spent uh, on the artist, uh, how did you exactly break down um, that figure in like, terms of uh, bill hours per piece? I was lucky. Uh, my guy was honest and hardworking, which apparently most artists uh, contract work online are not. Uh, sorry, man, online contract artists in the audience. <laughs> but uh, basically, I said, look, I will pay you this much halfway through and this much at the end. That was it. Okay, so it was basically flat fee and... Uh, he agreed to do enough art to get the game going. Oh, and I gave him a percentage so that he was really actually sort of interested in finishing the game. Yep. Yep. Oh, and last thing I want to say is I actually just started a magazine um, called Downloadable Games. <laughs> I've got copies of people today. Uh, if anyone else is at the door, and I'll be out front. I'll give one to you as well. Cool. Okay, so I have a question about uh, resource reuse. So you've done a lot of games. I imagine you've written a lot of code. And I was wondering how much of a, a set of libraries or tools or reusable pieces of resources that you maintain and does it help with the seven-day schedule? Very much so. Very, very much so. That character was actually in two games. <laughs> I just liked it and had a very minor cameo in a previous game. I'm like, screw it, this entire game is going to be about that character. Um, and as for code, I have some standard things. I've got like a, a setup file that has a whole bunch of sort of generic functions I call from, uh, you know, very sort of basic 2D, 3D functions, stuff like that. Um, and I have done a whole bunch of failed projects. So this RTS was not my first RTS. Only my friends played my first two RTSs, and only a few people on a few small websites played the next two. 